Okay. Oh. Do you want to record this because we didn't record the last one? Yes. Um, well, we do have Peg TV with us. Oh, well, I know, However, um, okay. do you want me to record and stop for the tour? Take it for the yeah. tour? I could take oh. it. Oh. Yeah. I could take it on the tour. I don't know. Um, okay, so we're starting. Recording in progress. Thank you. Um, so if I could get someone to make a motion to review and accept the agenda, please. So moved. Second. Thank you. Um, anything that we need to add or subtract? I don't think so. Yeah, I have something to add. Uh, I'd like to uh, mo move that we include a discussion of. Uh, I want to move to amend the agenda to include a discussion of the desirability for having volunteers in the schools. Um, well, that's tonight's about facilities that we could talk about that at our next meeting. But well, I just think it's a critical issue, so that's that's why I'm moving it. Um, what's everybody's thoughts? Lori, I personally feel I just got done looking at the Peg TV of the October meeting, and there was a lot to discuss there. I know. So. Um, I personally think that our focus would be better to stay on that topic and and accept Kevin's uh, motion for the next meeting. Uh, I mean, I'm for discussing it tonight. I mean. Well, it all I, depends on how long it takes. I mean, we've only got two hours, and we didn't get to really talk about our discussion last time, and I don't want to lose momentum. So I understand. And I understand I mean, that this is about volunteering. It's not about facilities. So... And that's what the second meeting of the month is about. But There's I'm, no time. I'll leave it to you. So is there any time constraint? Like, is there any reason why it needs to happen like right now? I think we have a crisis in the schools. I think we've been hearing about that every meeting for the entire uh, quarter, and uh, uh, I think that um, we as a board need to need to act upon that. I, I agree with Gary, uh, and okay. that it, it's an issue, but uh, we need to stay focused on our facilities discussion. And we need to get that done before the end of the year, so actually we need to get it done now, so. <laughs> okay, so Let's I'm looking at everybody else. Postpone. I don't know what everybody else's thoughts are. Or I need a quorum one way or the other, I suppose. Is there a motion? Is, uh, well, the motion is to add it to the agenda. Well, it's got to be seconded. There hasn't been seconded. Right, it has not been uh, seconded. I'll second it. I, I think it's something that should be okay. discussed as well. All right. So, any other discussion about it before we vote? Barbara? What I miss? Sorry. So, um, <laughs> Kevin would like to add to the agenda to talk about volunteering at the school. My suggestion was that tonight is about facilities, and we did not really get a chance to talk about facilities last time. Um, so I was asking everybody what their thoughts were. Thank you. If we push it to the next meeting, is, and I'm just thinking about the calendar, the next meeting December is first, December first, first a Wednesday, yeah. so it's two yeah. weeks from tonight. Yes. And we're <coughs> schools are closed most of next week, so yep. we're not talking right a lot of school time if we if we push it to it's it's not sure. even a full two weeks because schools closed three days. Right. Right. Yeah. Just making sure I had December first on the right day. I understand. And Okay, any other discussion? Well, maybe we could make the tour a little faster and do our essential business. Well, if we have time at the end of the meeting, we'll discuss it, but I think at this point, we really need to talk about facilities. We should take a vote. But, we are, but we're gonna do voting right now. Mm -hmm. All those in favor of Kevin's motion to add um, a discussion regarding volunteering at the high school, please signify by saying aye. 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 I need a raise of, I need a show of hands. All those opposed? Okay, the no's have it. So we, if we have time at the end, I will entertain it again, but at this point we really do need to talk about facilities. Okay, any other, um, anything else regarding the agenda? Okay, all those in favor of the agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Okay. We have an agenda. Okay, we're going to do a tour of the Neshtabee Elementary School. And those of you online, I'll take you with us. Okay. All these different walking so we're trails move on. in the Brandon Forest area. Great. Um, communications with parents, citizens, and staff. Board select talk. 
Um, is there anyone here who wants to talk to the board in regards to something other than facilities or something that's come up? I like it. Okay. I haven't had any issues so or any. Oh, wait. Is what? this is this communications? communications? Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I've invited, I see his hand up too. Okay. I invited Bill Moore to join us. Oh, right. Bill met with uh, Brenda Fleming, Dave Atherton, and myself and has a a proposal that we don't want you to react to to answer but we want it as part of your thoughts on the facilities process okay. um so bill you want to uh, can everybody hear me mm -hmm. yes excellent hello everybody welcome bill moore direct director economic development officer of town of brandon i know just about everybody <laughs> um, if i don't know you hello um so yeah i i, I reached out to gene and brenda and met with uh, my boss the town manager uh, of brandon Dave Atherton to talk about this big idea that we had been around for a little while um, and I just wanted to present this to you guys and just have you consume it, think about it, have it wash over you, process. Um, so, uh, you know, background on, on, on what I've been thinking about, I know that with uh, the Act 46 uh, Consolidation School District, uh, right around that time, I think it was directly maybe following that, there was a it was uh, an idea put forth to build a gymnasium on the uh, Neshby School campus, and uh, it, it was close, but it ended up going down, I think, by a margin of maybe 80 votes, if I recall correctly. Um, it was close, but no cigar, and I felt like that was really sort of the best chance, at least at that time, for the possibility of the, that kind of an expansion of a gymnasium space on Neshby's uh, campus, and that's where I do a lot of my indoor activities with our the youth. I sort of serve as the de facto athletic director for the youth of the uh, Neshaby School and even now more so with the Otter Creek Academy at that time, Lesser School and Sudbury School. Um, and so I've just been kind of racking my brain about a way to try and solve that issue, the fact that we do need gym space. You guys are currently meeting in your gymatorium, you know, cafeteria space that uh, I know your dedicated custodial staff, uh, led by uh, fantastic Mr. Clay, has to knock that space down and put it back up uh, with gym classes as well with our, uh, you know, when we do rec activities, we're starting to move into our rec activities uh, indoors. Um, you know, it's just time consuming. It's not a great space. It's not large enough to really host events. And that there's a need within our communities for that kind of a space. And, <clears throat> So, uh, you know, I don't know if I fell um, or an apple came and hit me when I was hanging out underneath <laughs> a tree, but I thought about an idea that potentially could, could work to try and um, provide some space for the National School well, in the Brandon Rec, in the community, our communities writ large. And uh, I know that you guys own some, some space that is to the north and slightly east of the school. It runs by where the daycare is. It runs back up alongside the playground. Um, and I thought if there was some way that we could use that space to build to build a facility that that, that could serve both of our purposes. Um, and, and understanding that you know that something like that would be a huge idea, require a lot of moving parts uh, with potentially uh, the, the school. Giving, giving, uh, giving us the opportunity to build on that spot. We may have to take ownership to make that happen. Uh, but, but uh, again, I'm getting ahead of myself. But about building some sort of, oops, sorry. <laughs> but I don't, I don't have my uh, my fantastic pictures that I shared with Brenda and, and, <laughs> and Jean. Um, but the, I just wanted to explore the, the possibility, uh, the feasibility of, of the town building a large facility that would be adjacent to the Neshaby School that would be used by the school and also used by the town um, that would potentially have a large gym that would be used by the school during the school day, uh, a smaller gym that would be sectioned off from the, from the larger gym that would have access that the public could possibly use with a separate entrance, um, and a pool as well, and possibly community workout space um, that would sit on that space next to the Neshaby School. And, and and again, like, it's, a, it's a huge idea. There's not a lot of, this is just an idea. Um, 
and again, I wish you could see my drawings because it really sort of brought it, brought it all to life. But in, but, it, but, in all, but in all seriousness, you know, uh, th there is money out out there within the municipal government uh, to apply for and get uh, funding for uh, exploring these kinds of ideas. And so, you know, as those start to come online, I just wanted to sort of have you guys think about that. And it wouldn't commit you guys to anything, but if I were to see an opportunity to apply for a missile planning grant that would allow just to determine the feasibility, a general sketch up, not even engineering, but you know, the idea of whether one, something like that could be possible, two, what it would look like, and three, what the cost would be um, to work toward trying to fund something like that. And again, we're, we're open to any and all ideas or concepts, and whether it's the the town taking ownership of it, understand that maybe the Otter Valley Unified Union School District might have difficulties in securing funding from the other towns to fund something on one town's property. Um, you know, addressing security issues, you know, if we were to ever even move close to this, you know, the funding that would be on, on the town and the school to sort of work toward together, but really the town would have to own this to, to, to make it work, I think. But again, like uh, that's what a feasibility study would be about, so. I'm happy to field any questions. I know I just threw up a lot on you in sort of disorganized fashion, but I'm definitely available for any questions you might have now or outside of the meeting. Um, so, Bill, um, when are these funds that you're talking about might, that you could apply for, um, when do you think they're going to come online? The, uh, so the last, uh, it would be something that would probably be fiscal year 22-23. Okay. Uh, those, municipal, those municipal planning grants come up. Uh, uh, Become available. I'd probably look to have to think about. I think the deadline is the beginning of July, August, somewhere in there. That's okay. where I would need to again apply for just the money to fund a feasibility study. Right. Right. Okay. So I was just trying to figure out the timeline. Like, how fast do you need to know from us? I mean, obviously sooner rather than later, but um, how that would you know? I didn't yeah, want to I mean, you know, like I know, I know you guys are in the middle of budget season. I, know you guys, I mean, I know I'm in the middle of budget season and trying to prepare budgets. Mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to be something you guys were thinking about, especially as you, you know, look at your infrastructure. That this is a possible solution, that creative solution that the town could help try to provide, and you, could, you know, be a win-win-win. You know, win being the school, win mm -hmm. being. And, and, the, and I would add that communities. Brenda and I were really interested as well in you bringing it to the board just as you're considering all of your facilities. It's a creative idea, a creative partnership. If it actually came to be, mm -hmm. we could actually teach kids how to swim mm -hmm. out here on the lake. I mean, in a swimming pool so they could go to the lake. Um, so who knows? It is, it's a grandiose idea. Bill thinks big, um, but we're throwing out there. All right. Thank you, Bill. Bill, it might be useful for you to come back and, and, uh, Show us a map and and uh, maybe we can discuss it in further detail sometime. Uh, I, I think I caught that, uh, 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 Dr. Thornton. The, the as you're asking for a map. I can absolutely. I, I would love to share with you my artwork. Um, <laughs> I, I drew up on on Microsoft Paint, mind you, over a Google satellite image of the school, so you can get kind of an idea of what I'm thinking about. Uh, I think many architects and designers would be appalled, but it would sort of give you a real basic idea about what I'm looking at. Um, like it, it, was the, it was the subject of much derision at the, at the meeting with Brenda and, <laughs> and Brenda and Dave in particular. No, but no, so absolutely, I'll, share, I'll, I'll forward that on to the entire school board by way by through Gene. If, sure. If That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for letting me interrupt so, your meeting. Yeah. Hey Bill, do you do you think that the town can will be able to uh, fund it and get grants for it? Is that what you're saying? So I mean that you know that's this is kind of the first you know the pre step the first step to even consider this like you know I, you know I wouldn't want an article written about this necessarily <laughs> because I think you know like I mean I just I mean it's not a open meeting but I just, you know this is you know trial balloon of a dream of yeah a, it's a concept right. just a concept <laughs> understood. But depending on what the depending on what the cost is is what what you're saying is it will depend on if the town can fund it or if grants can fund it or or maybe all three but you know but once you have the feasibility study you you can go through those processes and figure out what can be done financially 
Exactly, Angela. That, that, those, those are the things that, yeah, I mean, feasibility sort of kind of brings it home and gives you some real rough numbers and maybe gives you potential avenues to, to investigate. I imagine something like this, if it were to, you know, come to fruition and we get to a point where we start doing uh, fundraising that it would require probably a, a decent size municipal bond, some grant money, some uh, some capital fundraising efforts on the part of, uh, of myself or anybody else would be on the committee to fundraise this. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a very big idea. But I mean, you know, like Gene talked about, you know, like, you know, you gotta think big, and you just gotta get whittled down. Think, think big, you know, the idea of teaching kids to swim, the idea of Otter Valley maybe being able to ha have a swim team. You know, mm -hmm. the idea of us being able to be the only pool in the area that's open that'd be an indoor pool that people would be able to access. I mean, this, you know, so thinking about that, you know, there might be opportunities to fundraise from corporate sources, from private donors, yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to move us into um, our facilities discussion that we are continuing from um, October 20th. Um, I really don't care what uh, order we go in, but there were three things that we were talking about. Um, one was the cost benefit analysis of giving Sudbury, the Sudbury building to the special education. Um, department to have an um, office space and um, alternative program. Thank you. And then um, there's also the update on the Lester modular uh, building and then the middle school model. So I'll leave it to you guys so which one you'd like to discuss first. Yes, Mary. Can I discuss something else? <laughs> <laughs> um, I just this afternoon looked at, took your suggestion. I look at the PEG TV of the October meeting because unfortunately I wasn't able to be there. Um, and in looking at that, a couple of things jumped out at me that I, I'd kind of like to share. One is there were some great presentations by Kristen and, and Allison and Brenda spoke very well and Greg spoke to the middle school as well. Um, but the meeting was really all over the place as far as content. And it really brought me back to the 18 months I spent on that task team. And that took 18 months because it was big and it was broad. And it was all over the place. And a lot of the things that were talked about kind of exacerbated other problems. So it was very difficult to hone in on where we were going. I think that as we look at these particular things and I look at the discussions of that meeting, I'll. There's a process, there's a science to problem solving, and I did it for a living, so I'm very familiar with it. And it's called the Demaic process of Six Sigma. And it's basically define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. And it's, it's successful with every single effort, whether it's a process or a problem or a project. In this particular case, what I heard in that meeting was a lot of discussion around the improve phase of that. That was like the natural content of the discussion. Well, why don't we do this or why don't we do that and what about this and what about that? But it was halfway through the meeting, there was still a lot of confusion around what was the problem? I mean, what was the most immediate problem we were trying to solve as a group, as a team? And people were surprised. Some people were surprised to hear that, you know, maybe the, the OCA thing was at the level it was at. And I think that in these meetings, unlike the task team, which is a little bit more focused and the, the term of the focus is more immediate than the task team was, I would really like to see us define, maybe take some time and analyze and define what is the most immediate critical need that we need to focus on facility-wise as a group. And that could be because it's the magnitude of it, the severity of it, the, the timeline of it, the impact of it, whatever criteria we use to determine it's the most immediate need to focus on, define what that is, kind of measure again, it's a natural flow of things, measure how bad is that problem, what's the impact of it, how, how much does it need to improve to actually no longer be a problem, talk about those things and then analyze what are the variables that are preventing us from fixing it, causing it to worsen, whatever it may be, 
and then talk about the improved piece. You know, what are the suggestions we can have? Angela talked about, we're just throwing darts on the wall. Terrific, that's an actual method of brainstorming the improved phase of that focus. But a lot of what that meeting was about was people were just talking about, well, maybe this, well, maybe we move everybody to Neshebi, or maybe we do this, maybe we do that. But there was no real definition of the problem we were focusing on. So I would like to see us, rather than address the middle school model or whatever other, other things you had on your list, let's figure out what is the thing we're trying to, what's the most immediate critical thing we're trying to fix, and then focus on that. Once that's resolved, then you go to what's the next most immediate thing, now that that one's off the table. Just my thoughts. Well, I think the, the most immediate need or fix, we, we did have that discussion. We said that, you know, the Sudbury School is empty. That's, that's one issue. Um, we don't have enough space. That was another issue. Um, what else did we have? Somebody help me. <laughs> well, those were it was, it was building, too many buildings, yeah. not enough space. Um, we did talk about... Um, but even in that conversation, Angela, I remember, you go back a meeting or two, and, and I love Marcia, she's tremendous, but I, I tried to ask a question when we were at the Sudbury School meeting, and I probably didn't articulate it well because I could tell she didn't understand where I, what I was trying to determine. But in the discussions we had along the way, I was never really sure. Was Marsha's proposal a solution to the Sudbury School being empty? Or was Marsha's, was the Sudbury School being empty a solution to Martha's problem? A Marsha's problem. I was never sure which was which, and I tried to ask that question, and I didn't say it very well, and I didn't get the answer I needed, but I almost felt as though someone months ago threw out that our biggest problem right now is the fact that Sudbury School is empty, and then Marsha came forward in her team with, hey, perhaps this is a solution. But I never felt as though Marsha's proposal was truly identifying a problem that she had within her domain she was rather offering her, her area as a solution for the Sudbury School being vacant. That's what I had felt all along. So we spent a lot of conversation around that. And then as the meeting went on, it became more apparent that people really felt as though the OCA problem was the most immediate and biggest problem. And to me that meant, okay, great. If we agree to that, and Marsha's answer needs to be now, then maybe her time isn't now. And the, and the OCA problem is now, and then maybe Marsh's proposal is next year. That's kind of the way I looked at the way the conversation was going. I love Bill Moore as well. But as soon as someone jingles money in front of you, all of a sudden now it's the most immediate focus you have, and it isn't the most immediate problem you have. We got That's money jingling feeling. in front of us? Well, he said we'll, <laughs> we'll get municipal share of funding. And then there's that a lot of interest in it. But is the gymnasium the most immediate problem we have? I don't think it is. That being said, unless I feel personally, and, I, and I, if no one cares to feel the way I do, I'm fine with that too. But unless we really hone in on fixing the most immediate problem in the district today, we'll be 18 months again and I won't be here by then, and we still won't have any solutions. Hopefully we won't be fighting a pandemic all that way, but. I'll take a stab at defining it your way, Barry, and say that our most immediate problem is doing something that the voters will support, <laughs> which would rule out the super campus immediately. We can take two seconds for that. Um, and if we think about what, um, what we can present to the voters that's going to generate support and pass and, and, and widespread support, uh, that's going to help define our discussion quite a bit. I'd be curious to know, too, have, have the needs shifted? I mean, we did a lot of work, and I know that the specific ask for last 
facility meeting was to revisit the middle school because some of the board members weren't part of that process. So that's why people spoke specific to the middle school at the last meeting. But I guess the other way to approach this would be we spent 18 months as a task force, have the problems or the issues shifted, the needs shifted in light of the current sort of landscape where we find ourselves now, or I mean, if it hasn't much, then a lot of that work may still be applicable. So I guess that that would be the only add or the value add here um, based on you know what we worked on for that length of time. <coughs> Angel. So maybe we spend our time um, identifying what our problems are and then um, put them in order of severity and then from there we discuss whatever what's the next step I forget what you said yeah measure. it doesn't jump to or then you do measurements yeah and then um, not that we have to actually do that process um, because I think we have to do it you faster than do what a business process. would do it. It's just <laughs> but, the methodology. But the methodology, yeah, is definitely. I think I think it makes sense. I think it would definitely organize us. I think if we we actually say, all right, what it, what does the school board actually feel is our immediate issues now? Put them in order of severity, and then start figuring out how to how to um, solve those problems. And I just ask too, would it be the board that's identifying those issues or is it like, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just, just asking, I mean, is it, I mean, I, to me it's something Brenda would be involved, you know, I mean, there's. Well, I think a lot of people would be involved in it. A lot of people. Right. But, uh, but the okay. board definitely has to have that discussion. <clears throat> needs. Yeah, well, I think I, the board needs the focus. And yeah, I think no, a lot of sense. people would be involved in the, in the um, I think that's part of the part of the measurement is having bring bringing everybody in to say hey you know here's here's our data to support is is this really as severe as what the board thinks it is or should it should it go down a couple levels and something else should be higher up in the chain right um, which is what we did for 18 months so i guess i'm trying to figure yeah, out what it is for that gap i think you're right though i think it's a little different than what it was 18 months ago I, I think the landscape has changed, Allison, with respect to the demographics and the and the um, capacity. Um, it sounds, at least, it sounded that way to me listening to the October meeting, and it sounded as though the greatest impact on that yes. element was OCA. I could be wrong. That's just what I heard. And not to diminish at all the task team or the middle school option, but. I always kind of viewed that, and Greg kind of spoke to it, I think, in the October meeting, as though that would be like a solution that would fix a lot of problems, that would be like a next level solution. And his comment was that, geez, if we had done that, we wouldn't be having these conversations today. However, I mean, we'd be foolish not to acknowledge the tremendous efforts that went into fighting a pandemic that killed 750,000 people. Um, I mean, that well, was a year and a half of time or almost two years of time that we really were offline or off focus. And who's to say that we won't end up right back at that? Right. right. At the middle school idea. Right. I mean, it's, I don't think any of that work is not. Well, not Angela, I think when you say that, I agree with you 100 percent. If you could get to the point of saying our most immediate problem is X, X Y, Z, X, right? And how do we solve that immediacy of the X problem? Maybe there's interim solutions to the immediacy of the X problem to where it can sustain itself until the, the next solution comes available. That's all I was trying to point out. And I'll, now I'll surrender the floor. Mm -hmm. Such a pleasure. Yep. My, my recollection of of the conversation at the last the last meeting, uh, I agree with you, Barry. That it's, it it sounded to me as as the uh, as the discussion unfolded and and we had to stop our meeting. It sounded that the AOC issues were really the ones that were the priority need um, in terms of the Lester building and and then trying to figure out how the Sudbury facility fit in with helping to solve the, the needs that were there. And uh, 
I think we were at a point of, of somebody had thrown out the idea of, of uh, using the Sudbury facility for, um, for some student classroom space to help relieve the Lester crowding problem. Um, and I think we were leaning towards a primary unit because the facility is already structurally designed for that versus an older population. Um, and, uh, and with the variables and the needs of, of, the, of a primary population, it's more suited towards that. Um, so in my mind, that was kind of where the discussion was going, and then we had to stop. I don't know what would have been next, but we we're going to find out. <laughs> <we're here. laughs> um, so, as as much as I'm an advocate for, you know, Marsha's proposal of having some kind of trauma-based uh, support system uh, in our district, we need we need that option in our. Uh, in our continuum of services that we need to have available. And I think the other thing that I remember Marsh was saying towards the end of that meeting was, I think you had asked the question, Laura, you know, how much of a commitment in years do we need to give you to make this work? And her, I think her answer was, um, if you're not solid on it for a multi-year solution, then I'd rather not go there. Mm -hmm. I think something to, those, to that effect. That is what she said. That is exactly what I said, Barry. Okay, Marsha. <laughs> <laughs> I also can answer your question, Barry. Okay. I didn't understand it that evening. That was my fault, Marsha. So, oh, oh, no, that's okay. It's hard. You know, I think hybrid meetings are hard. And, and um, I'm, you know, I've been doing the business for so long, sometimes I don't articulate it deeply enough for other people to understand because I know it in my own head. Um, I think that I'm a very um, a person who's solution driven and also takes advantage of opportunities. So Sudbury presented both for special services. So when a building is empty, I will take advantage of an opportunity and I will look for a solution. So we do know our office space is inadequate and we do know we had money to do some renovation. So it was both things, Barry. But you need to know that philosophically and, and educationally, I would always support the need for um, a school like Leicester if it needs the building and I would never compete um, in my own district for space and I would honor anything the board does and certainly appreciate Tom's dilemma at Leicester. So again, a solution and an opportunity. It's not a necessity. And as I recall, Marcia, if you didn't have Sudbury, you still have the problem of what you need to do for kids, but you would look for other solutions. I will look for other solutions and I will find other opportunities and I will commit myself to solving all of our concerns, even if I don't have said that. Well, I'd like to just second everything that, that Derek just said. I think he, he put his finger on the immediate problem and, um, and defined what our discussion needs to be about tonight, at least the first part of it. So do we start there? Do we start with OCA and their space issues? And when we talk about OCA, we're also talking about Sudbury at the same time because they are all part of the camp same campus. So. <clears throat> Can we just go over like the space issues? Let's go over like wh what needs to be done there that needs to. Sure. So the space issues are that um, there are lots of extra support staff at Leicester. Um, and they don't have any of their own space. Um, the principal's office is also being used for other guidance. offices. Thank you, guidance. And um, and so there's no place for... Um, for support services. It's The school is, um, you know, when we brought Sudbury back into Leicester, our numbers were about 60 kids, roughly 60, 65. This year we're closer to 80. Um, which is fine. We have the same number of classrooms being used, so those kids are absorbed. But, um, but there's no place for any of the support services. So we're doing support services in 
truly closets. There's not even a lot of closets there. Um, multiple people in single offices. The uh, modular unit was going to be a way to relieve some of that support. And Leicester, while the numbers of students are low, it's, it's at the same time our highest free and reduced lunch population. And um, they need the support service, academic interventionist, SLP, guide, we added a guidance counselor there, we added a school nurse there. They never had their own full time of either of those, a part-time librarian, um, which means a library as well. So for Lester to be a um, fully functioning school, um, that came with support services. If, I don't know if you want me to go on. Yeah. No, go ahead. If, so one of the ideas that came up last meeting is should you move, and I agree it would be primary, back over to Sudbury, which would come with another discussion about what would it take to do that, because um, this district has a history of a single principal doing multiple buildings, and that has not worked, and Tom's the most recent example of having lived that, where he came to the board a couple years ago and said this is, I'm never in the right building at the right time. I'm either in my car between two buildings when there's a crisis in one building or the other building, or you know, if, if a school has 20% of my population, does that mean I spend 20% of my time there, but that's where the needs are? And so um, you really need a dedicated administrative support as well for the two buildings. So that just needs to be So has there in. never been a discussion of having an assistant principal? where if one's at one school, you have another one so at the, another? So what you've done traditionally, to that effect? Yeah, traditionally what you've done is you've taken, um, you by, I mean, Otter Valley District has taken, and even the <coughs> Sudbury and Leicester districts before that, they took a teacher and gave them a stipend to be the de facto administrator mm -hmm. when the administrator isn't there. And we've done that for at least my eight years here, and I know it was before that. So I think Laura Coro's probably done it for almost her entire career here. Mm -hmm. um, but that still isn't the same as having the the administrator there. So she might be the first line of defense, but she'd have to call the principal who now needs to leave whatever school and, and go and deal with the other. She needs she still needs to teach, so it's and hard. she still needs well, to teach. Hard to wear both of those hats. Yeah. So yeah, it could be um, an assistant principal. We even thought that maybe the guidance counselor, if if Tom and the guidance counselor were in two places, maybe, you know, but that 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 isn't the way the kids work. The kids don't schedule when they have a crisis. Unfortunately, if we could get them to do that, um, then, then it'd be great. Um, but it just doesn't work that way. Tom's already still overseeing the whiting pre-K, and, and we still provide services to that because we have uh, pre -K, two pre-K classrooms in there. So there's still a little bit of that, but with the child care center upstairs, it helps a little bit there. Um, so just if, if, you know, if you, if you go down that path, just recognize that we would be strongly advocating for um, whether it's an assistant principal. So what's the capacity that could be at Sudbury? So two to three classrooms there. Yeah. There's two closed classrooms, one open classroom there. So that's not a huge 30, capacity. 30 so to three 45? Classes. 30 to 45 kids? Yeah. <clears throat> the other what issue. What about the sensitivity? Well, there's also the issue that um, we will ha hear from parents who are not going to want their kids separated. Again. So just realize, you know, um, especially in two separate schools. So we need and to the, support and the, that. And the population can flex again. I mean, you, I don't have any more of a crystal ball than you do. Um, generally, our enrollment has been staying steady in the state. It's going down. So you could end up in two years from now back at 60 kids. And then again, do you want to spend money on two buildings or come back to one building? Lori, back to the pieces that I'm still missing in my decision making here is um, have, have we really measured what is the magnitude of the problem at Leicester right now so we know do any of these solutions resolve it? Brenda, I know you spoke to some degree at that October meeting around what the shortcomings were facility-wise. Could you maybe refresh my memory on that a little bit? Can I ask that, Lori? You just did. Okay. <laughs> so um, I was trying to find the floor plan to show you that again because I think that really highlights what we put into the proposed floor plan for the 
the, the modular unit is exactly what we're missing in the school. And so while shifting grades to use Sudbury would alleviate some of it, it will not solve all of the issues at Leicester. There are still some issues, it certainly makes them less, um, and there are still some issues with bathroom facilities, nurse facilities, ventilation, and maybe still some space issues. It's hard for me to tell, and it depends on which grades go. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question. And, and just a, another reminder, as you said, Lori, you're splitting families. They have to do that at some point when they go on to middle school as well. But it is in the younger grades, and that is usually not something people are excited about. We would be splitting staff. And when you split staff and you have a, essentially a six hour education day, maybe a six and a half hour education day, and you lose a half an hour of instruction that staff are using to travel, that, that's challenging. It makes it really hard to provide a lot of staff that need to go between the buildings. Well, Brenda, if the proposed uh, modular space, does it resolve those shortcomings? I know it was like 20 by 52 or something. Does it resolve those needs that exist? It resolves the needs for the short term. And how short is that term? Well, part of the short term was board inflicted, and I respect it because aesthetically a trailer isn't beautiful. So the board really was very clear that they wanted to see the trailer be, you know, I think you said, as little a length of time as possible until a better solution is found. Um, the other issues that Lester has that we can't ignore. But, but to, to my question, if it were to remain there, if the, <coughs> if the board's request to have it removed didn't exist and the, and the modular solution were to remain there, with respect to the problem, how long would that solve the problem? So I'm going to go out on a limb and tell you my opinion and then ask Tom to chime <laughs> in as well from his point of view. From my point of view, it would solve all of your space issues. At Lester. At Lester. Um, the other two issues that still exist, and one we have to solve anyways, and we're in the process of doing that, and that is the water issue. So whether there's a trailer or not a trailer, that's going to have to be resolved. And then the other one is, you know, that what if, which can happen at any time without notice, and that is if we ever have an issue with the septic system. So the conversation in the October meeting around the next phase that would include an addition to Lester wouldn't be necessary if the module unit were to remain? Well, that's, right. I guess that's what he's getting at. How, how many years can you get out of the modular? Oh, you can get 20 plus. That was 20 my plus. question. Again, see, Marsha, this is why I don't get good answers, because I don't ask good questions. <laughs> <laughs> Just be direct. Right. <laughs> how many years? Yeah, 20 plus. 20 plus, 20 yeah. Plus there are, still has value. There's still, it's, it's a stick build modular. It's, it's, it's just, you can move it. But size-wise, it meets the need for yes. the foreseeable future. Yes, it does. Okay. Yes, and last time you want to chime in, then I'm not correct. He gave you a thumbs up. Thank you. Thumbs up. Visual, Brenda, you are correct. Um, I would just happily point out that actually we have enrolled several new children, uh, not new children, but several new students in the uh, last few weeks. So we're actually in the upper 80s now um, with, for our K um, through 6 population at Leicester. Um, in my humble opinion, in debating with sending some of them back, and I do agree that it uh, would best be the, the primary grades because I just know that with adolescents being who they are, I want to be as close to them as possible. And when they were all the way down at Sudbury, um, that seemed to work out probably less beneficially than the younger students being there. So I, I learned a lot from my rebuilding jaunts of a couple years ago. Um, I would point out that, that if it came down to Sudbury, the modular, the modular uh, would it would pretty much solve what our, our present space needs. And its added value is that it keeps everybody under the same roof um, and not split up families, um, older brothers and younger brothers and sisters, et cetera. Um, siblings are all together. 
Also, it cuts down, as, as has been mentioned, on the travel time um, for me, for the nurse, for the guidance person. And one of the benefits of the uh, modular was that it also included intervention space. Um, and if we separate two buildings, we need two of everything rather than one. So if we, if we brought three classes down to Sudbury, um, classroom-wise, that would work. But we would also need separate intervention space for them, uh, a separate library, et cetera. Whereas if they were in the modular, um, and I joked with Jeannie recently because in a previous district in which we both worked, there was a modular that stayed on the end of my building for actually 45 years <laughs> um, until a bond actually made it that the addition more permanent. Um, and that was stretching it, but it actually was still a pretty good quality. So anyway, instead of needing two of everything in two different buildings, um, you know, there'd be an efficiency in terms of everybody under one roof and not having to build in uh, you know, commute time, we, we have turned a, a lot of the commute time into actual more instructional time. We offer more PE than is the state minimum because of that and more intervention time as well. So I would highly favor uh, the modular versus sending uh, any group of students down to Sudbury because I think it would uh, economize a lot of things and create a cohesive, you know, building community. Angela? I would also like to uh, suggest that, uh, and Marsha, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe you said that if, if your, um, your uh, idea of, of bringing the kids over, or bringing the kids back into district would save us money, correct? It does, yes. So if, so if we save money by bringing these kids back into the district, that would pay for the modular. Well, it we'd would have be. The money for the modular. We'd have yes. the money for the modular, and it and it wouldn't um, it wouldn't be a lot of money out of our pocket, and we wouldn't have to we come end up, up with saving money yeah. in the long run. So that's you, a measurement. You can't use special ed dollar reimbursements to pay for modules. Understood. Understood. No, not special ed. We have. No, Angela. It's a big try. Yeah. <laughs> no, but we have ESSER funds for the modular, and special ed would have a savings. Two different statements. Eric? Is there, um, is there a temporary solution in, in surviving with the status quo until we can acquire the modulars? We actually started that conversation this week. Um, you know, especially as it's getting cold and we can't really send the kids outside quite as much for PE and some of those things, we are wondering if we need to talk to the town about, you know, one of the buildings nearby, which we don't think will be successful. We don't know. We're hurting. Yeah. Especially, I didn't realize, Tom, that Tom's out there in the street corner recruiting kids. That's great. <laughs> If but, I may also add uh, one other point, um, based on just the, the changing uh, needs of our community and the growing stress that all kids are under, especially uh, kids who have lived in you know trauma environments, um, Marsha's uh, proposal for Sudbury, uh, I'm sure there and there would be a, a, a distinct process for you know enrolling students in that program on a as needed basis and for as long as they need it. But um, I, I'm not being facetious and to say that I think I and my elementary colleagues would well fill that up. Um, we are, you know, in addition to space needs, which would be our second biggest needs, our, our highest need is dealing with children who have pretty significant trauma backgrounds. Um, and uh, I would have to think that that, that Sudbury environment for Kids across the supervisory union would be highly needed and, and would benefit the whole school community. In other words, we'd fill it right up. Mm -hmm. There is the issue of how long it's going to take to get a modular, correct, Brenda? Yeah. I think that's the other thing we need to be cognitive of. We didn't even get anyone to bid when we put it out to bid, correct? That's correct. I mean, we're ready to go out to bid again. They told us that um, the earliest that they would be able to look at anything in regards to filling the bid would be 
January or February, and that doesn't work in Vermont because you need a, a concrete pad to put it on. So uh, we are hopeful, and I did not put it out to bid after the last meeting because I wanted to make sure that you still wanted me to go down this path, but we are hopeful that we would get bids, and realistically we would put it in in, in the summer, early summer. To get back to the yeah. facilities yeah. themselves, um, we've, we've gotten a lot of sort of dribs and drabs of bad news about Leicester. Uh, you know, the parking issue with the town, the potential septic problem, the, the bathrooms failing uh, with the loss of the electric power for an hour. Um, so uh, my question is, what's the life left in the building? Life that's left in the current Lesser building? Yes. It all depends on how much you want to invest in it. I mean, the building is fine. Um, it's too small for your current population. As Brenda said, the only, the, the, the septic issue could be an issue at any time, is not right now. That's the ticking time bomb, but it has been a ticking time bomb. I say, I've been here. 15 years has been yeah. taking time off and for and we've been years, talking so. about it that whole 15 right so mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I think the water there was also another issue that we really need to think about because True. I mean they were doing other test wells and we won't know the results of those for a while but um, if that one vein that they're going to seal off all of a sudden becomes contaminated that's an issue a very big mm -hmm. issue and to spend the amount of money that I saw in the report on a modular unit that we might have to no longer use, even though it's free money, um, where we might be able to use it somewhere else. And I, I don't, I, you know, I'm not saying that we shouldn't put a modular at, at um, Leicester. I just wanted to revisit it because it was supposed to be here in September, and now all of a sudden we're a year out, and they're going without and they do have space issues and you know what makes the most sense for that school yeah I think those students I think you and, and Kevin both have pretty valid concerns around facilities within the <coughs> site um, but I also think and I said it before hopefully we can return our focuses again you know to what we normally would and this past two years of focus around a pandemic will subside um, and perhaps if our interim solution for OCA can sustain itself long enough to Allison's point we can refocus then on you know what is the middle school solution or what are what's like the next like the five-year plan solution and what does that alleviate for us I mean in honesty in the last two years we haven't been able to do that Bill, you had your hand raised. Uh, the thing with modulars is that you pay me now and you also pay me later. Uh, we had four modulars at Otter Valley, which probably were nobody here was at, at that time. But they leaked, they had uh, mold, uh, they had, you had to go outside to go from one to the other. It was really not a pleasant experience and uh, I think one of the finer days was seeing the bulldozer go in to take the things out. Uh, they just were not very good and their longevity was not there. <coughs> we thought that they would last for five years but they ended up at 25 years or some such number uh, and simply trying to patch it up is constantly having to chase it so I'm not really enamored of that, of mobiles as being a very good solution. But as opposed to construction or addition, I'm sorry. That's right. Eric, you had your hand raised. I was at Outer Valley during the mobile annex, as Bill is talking about. That's what we called them. And yeah, they were pretty, pretty lousy. But hopefully the technology has improved since then. I mean, that was 30 years ago. I'm hoping they're better now. But yeah, they were. Uh, it wasn't comfortable out there at all, especially in winter time. Um, 
Barry, since you were talking, and then Angela. I apologize for interrupting, but m my thought was to Bill's comment, yeah, it may not be the best solution, but I also noticed in, in looking at the meeting from October 30th, there was a lot of people stepping back when they heard the alternative would be, you know, an addition to the, the Lester building, which would probably be more risky, my only thought. Angela? Um, I was just gonna go off of what Eric said, but um, there, the, the, definitely the technology has come a long ways for the modulars. They, I mean, businesses are using them all over the state now. There, it's, it's definitely a, a solution to um, some definite space issues where you don't have the money to, to bond or have the money to build on and add on to buildings. Um, I, think, I think it should be our goal, though, as a board to not let it sit around for 25 years um, and fo really focus on you know, getting five or 10 years out of it and trying to figure out a long-term plan on what to do with um, Lester um, in, in all of our elementary schools, to be honest with you. Um, and our middle school and our high school. So I think, like Barry said, if if we focus on what the immediate need is right now and get us through, and then we say, all right, the next big item to, to tackle is our buildings and our room and and our our you know our growing population now, which was not a problem back <laughs> when we did the the study with the with the team. Um, we were actually going down when we did that. Now we're going up. So I think all of our all of our plans and all of our um, uh, studies that were done three four years ago has completely changed. So I think if if we did this modular to get us through for five ten years, the modulars are still going to be in good good shape. Um, and <clears throat> we just make sure we don't take the foot off, our foot off the gas to be able to figure out what our long-term solution will be. Um, I saw Mike first. And, and I agree with that 100%. I think at times what we tend to do is we fix the short-term problems and, we let it and go. then we just let it go until it becomes an issue again. Mm -hmm. I think to your point, well said, we have to keep foot on the pedal and make sure we're not losing sight of the long-term projects. So. What's the, what's our latest population projections, and do we have a bump or a bubble here that we're dealing with, or what? I don't think we actually have a bubble. We've been staying pretty steady. We're pretty steady. The bubble is moving through the high school right now. Where's um, the bubble now? Like, it's either eighth grade or ninth grade. I don't recall. Yeah, it's ninth grade. It's in the high school. Ninth, in the high school. So. Um, yeah, other than that, we are pretty steady. Um, but our kindergarten and stuff is big. That's yeah, our kindergarten is big. We we are a little uncertain of what our pre-K numbers will be coming up because COVID affected pre-K. Some parents just simply did not want to send their kids. Um, and so our numbers are lower than usual in pre-K, but our trend in pre-K and what's been playing out in kindergarten is we're, we're steady. So we've got three grades per class at Nashabe. We've got, we're probably going to one or two grades per class at Lothrop. Um, kind of depends on their kindergarten numbers. And um, Lester has a, a uh, one multi-age class that's gonna bubble on through. Yeah. Um, but the rest of the classes are single grade. So we don't, you know, we don't have that blip right now coming up that we see. If I can just add, um, Nashville has returned to the student level that we had 10 years ago. So um, for those who have been here for a long time, like myself, we've been steadily declining. We are now not only level, but growing slightly. And like I said, Nashville is back to where they were 10 well, years ago. And, and so is Lester getting to be and with. Lester is getting um, more and more students. So, so the time of declining enrollments, I think, we capped out at that, and we're we brought them down. either staying or creeping. Not surging, but they're definitely steady. 
But you said in Lothrop that that's going up too because you said that your space, your extra space is no longer going to be there because the younger is, students are going to fill it up. It, yeah, it's looking good at Lothrop. Okay. We're definitely filling back up again. Barbara? Oh, Barbara. In the expert opinions that are present, and out there is this seeming like a, a, a trend that will continue? It's a very good question. Nobody knows. COVID messed everything up. Mm -hmm. um, out of staters moving into the state with kids. You hear it in other districts. A lot of my colleagues, we don't have that particular problem, but I mm -hmm. am hearing that. Um, and yet the state as a whole has been going down significantly. It's really unknown if this, <clears throat> you know, for our communities, we've been pretty steady for a while. And, and have stopped going down, but statewide we haven't. So it's it's not. And then how many COVID babies are we going to have in the next? <laughs> you know, right. yeah. huge unknown. Is there anyone online who wants to speak? Because I haven't really. Yeah. Allison, did you have something to say? Well, I just I just wanted to say that I think what I hear too is a lot of what we discussed as part of that task force is there's this conundrum of, okay, our facilities need work, work costs money, we're growing, we need to invest, but what does that investment look like? And from a communication standpoint, and to Angela's point, it can't really be knee-jerk, so that what was, that's what was tricky about the planning component. So I think that you guys are sort of on the right path to determine short term, and that's similar to the trend that we set with the task force, what's our two, what's our five, what's our 10? And the reason for that is so that we could get community input, community engagement, and community buy-in when budget time and bonds and everything else sort of come to fruition, you know, so that we can plan that out. So I, I guess I just, and it's the same thing we sort of talked about round and round, that's why it was so hard for us to make a decision as part of the task force, because it was, you know, we had all the facility presentations, we had all the numbers, we had, and when you actually look at that, okay, so let's take Lester for an example. Say something happens with the water, does that building fold? Or do you invest in it because there's no other option? I mean, I guess I'm, I'm curious about that myself. Like, do you build the new school? No. I mean, what is it, you know, I mean, what does that look like? Oh, yeah. Is there, I you was, know, if there was a water or a, or a septic issue at Lester? We've always been waiting for that shoe to drop, and it, <coughs> it's always been looming over us, but it hasn't happened. So, but if it did, I guess if it did, what would that what would that leave you with? That's a good question. I don't know. Okay. Um, Bill or um, Mary? To sorry, kind of wrong B. marry in with Allison's thought there, um, how do you communicate that? What does that look like? You know, to the to the user community. I think if we were to go down the road of change, no matter what that change is, hopefully we've put good thought into the, into the rationale for the change and it's a good solution and it satisfies the need, we should communicate that. And we should communicate that, that this is a solution to this problem and it's expected to live for this amount of time. And that kind of sets the tone or sets the stage for the next level of discussion that says, Keep in mind, you know, we, we're wrestling with these issues at this site, and we're hoping that in a five to ten year time frame, we're looking at perhaps this for a solution. So it kind of, it kind of flows, I think, if that makes sense. As long as we communicate, you know, that the change that we're implementing is a solution to a known problem. I mean, we can't make the problem go away without a solution. We're not, we're not magicians. So we need a solution. And this solution is intended to suffice for this amount of time. And the reason it can't be a long-term solution is because inherently there's problems with the site that we don't really want to invest in long-term. And our better investment, to Allison's point, would be in a, a solution that we talked about through the task force. Mm -hmm. Just a thought. You know, we can kind of marry those two together, and we should. Because people are always cognizant of change, and they're always wondering, you know, why change? What was driv What was driving it? What does it buy me? 
And I think we ought to, we ought to really communicate that whenever we implement change. So were you saying, Barry, I, I kind of... Um, yeah, I know, I talked in a circle again. Well, so, well, <laughs> I think what, what our problem is is that all the, all the things that are on our agenda are all intertwined, almost. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about figuring out what's the most immediate problem, yeah. there, well, this problem feeds into this, and then this problem kind of feeds into but this. But they're not all on the same time space. Maybe not. That's what I'm saying. But the issue is, so... so you're talking about one of the task force, one of the things that came out of the task force was a middle school model. Mm -hmm. And so are you suggesting that we put the modular in at Leicester knowing that we, the plan is, is that within the next five to 10 years, we might have a middle school, whether it's at Otter Valley or at a different location? Yeah, I'm, I'm saying that I know this is open meeting, Okay. But I really believe transparency is our friend. Sure. And I, and I really believe that as we make um, good rational decisions, we should communicate them if they involve some level of change. Mm -hmm. And the value you get out of that is you can kind of foreshadow with that change perhaps what your next focus was going to be. That's all I'm really saying. We kind of marry the two efforts together. We don't forget one for the other. Sure. We deal with the most immediate, but we use that as kind of a precursor of an information flow for people the to next see problem. that it's not a forever solution and that you know, there, is, there are other things we're going to have to wrestle with a few years down the road. Does that make sense? So I'm, I'm, I'm saying we can't be paralyzed by the analysis and not move forward on a solution. <clears throat> um, and we don't push away any efforts that were made into a, you know, solutions that would have offset this need. We focus on both, but we focus on this one in its timepiece, and we focus on that one in its timepiece. So I guess, oh, go ahead, Angela. Well, I'm just sitting here thinking while you're all talking. And um, if we're going to talk about things that need to be fixed now, um, obviously Lester is probably the most immediate concern. Did we all agree on that? Okay. So knowing that we can't fix that without a temporary solution, we probably should just go ahead and do the, the modular. And then if we're going to do that, knowing that we've bought ourselves time for Lester, then we should give Marsha the chance to run her program at Sudbury. And knowing that we have only a few, that it's a temporary solution for the modular at um, Lester, because I do worry about the water issue even more than the sewer system. Um, I think that we need to talk also long term about the middle school model. Um, and I know Derek has something that he wanted to bring up tonight. Um, and so I'm curious as to if you want to hear that. I don't know if, the only if I could say yes or no, because I don't know what it is. <laughs> Lori, I, I said yes leaving us on a just said, but can I ha ask you one thing sure. that you did say yeah. a little bit more depth on? When you went to, so we should communicate then to Marsha that she should perhaps go forward with her Sudbury option mm -hmm. because we're discounting it as an option for the Lester situation situation. Have we discounted it completely? I guess I want to make sure that we have. Well, I, think we're gonna I, think, vote. I think if we have enough space with the modular. But that can't allow... happen until summer. Maybe. Well, true. I mean, but she's not going to have any kids in there until next okay. year anyway. Okay. So, I mean, that I don't, I mean, I know Marsha's good, but she ain't that good. So, so, <laughs> to, so to play devil's advocate a little yeah. bit, say we go ahead with what you're proposing. Sure. What happens if the septic system does go? Then we have no place. Well, that's not true. Uh, we probably do have, I mean, obviously Lothrop has some still additional space. And if we have to move kids, we have to move kids. So, and if the, if the septic system were to go 
before the end of the year. We're obviously going to use Sudbury in whatever capacity we can to help with that. Um, Initially, you know, I, I mean, I can't, I can't, house. I can't come up with a solution for every single thing that might happen. But since we've talked about the septic system for the last twenty years, and it's still. Well, Murphy's Law. Doing okay. <laughs> I'm I know. just going on Murphy's doing Law. There's wood on the floor. Um, <laughs> they still bring in bottled water to Lester. I know. Well, I got my soda. That's about. That's my bottled water. Um, anyway. Yeah. Um, but, Laurie, yeah. I'm sorry. The one thing that will be extremely important is that if we invest the money and change Sudbury into offices and special services, it would be extremely hard to accept that any two years or three years, we'd get asked to leave. We, we would not ask you to leave. I, I, I'm just going to put that out. Yeah, I, I know. I, cause you, I know what you had said at the last meeting, So and, and we wouldn't kick you out, if you're, especially if, you're, if your program is as needed as what everyone is saying it's needed, then there, it would be stupid to kick you out when it's doing such a great service for our kids. So... I really think you should hear what Derek wants to talk about tonight. And I want to uh, comment on what you just said first, though. You proposed a kind of sweeping three-step um, proposal, but it doesn't follow that if we do step one, that step two is necessarily... Well, that's true. I'm just throwing it out there, Kevin. Yeah, so I, I just want to make the point that I don't think... Uh, we should say, okay, here's the grand plan I'm without discussing the different ideas implicit in Absolutely, that. Absolutely, but okay. I, mean, I mean, I'm just throwing out an idea. You can murder it all you want. <laughs> okay. So, um, and then I, I, would, I think you should hear about what Derek's thought is. I think we should think about investing a little bit of money into it, um, which is also another bigger, grander scheme mm -hmm. option. You okay with that? Is and I don't want to take I don't want to take his thunder, so I'm, that's why I'm asking if you is it is it part of our facilities discussion? Yes. It sure is. It's a facilities discussion, um, at risk of moving away from the priority of Lester to talk about the middle school uh, issues that were raised with the task force and. And then the subsequent investigation into the feasibility of, of a super campus or a, uh, a, a super facility uh, at OB. Um, I would like to ask the board to um, spend a, a, a small amount of money to investigate uh, the viability or have a viability study done on the possibility of a middle school campus on the 44-acre parcel at the Caverly property in Pittsford. Um, there's some maps here uh, to look at. And no doubt that there's a lot of issues uh, and questions that, that may come from that, but um, given that we own a 44-acre parcel um, that, that borders the uh, Pittsford rec area, um, and uh, off, of, <laughs> off of Plains Road. Um, and it's the, the possible. It's also very central. It's very central. It's, uh, it's that tan area. It's the tan area of that map. Um, but in terms of looking at, at that property, uh, in terms of what, it, what would be available there, what would work there for a, a six through eight school, um, you know, it, it would create a, a gymnasium for the town of Pittsburgh. It would, uh, it would offer, uh, you know, it would offer a Pittsburgh to be a, a, a significant part of the alliance of our six towns, um, and it would save the fields and and some of the other cost factors of uh, trying to accomplish uh, a middle school on the OV campus. So, so just a feasibility, look at it. Is it possible? Uh, was, is there something that was <laughs> back up a little when you said it's central, central to? Yeah, it's well, not so central. Well, so Otter Valley <laughs> is pretty much central to all of our schools. And, well, and, and that's Cavalier's what I'm saying that because I, I've asked people in the past when they were, who are still around, who remember when the, they're building the Otter Valley, and that was a compromise to put it where <laughs> that was because that was 
considered the most central location that was almost on the Pittsburgh border. So, and the other towns weren't coming so far. That was more looked at central. You're pushing that out another 10 more miles. Yeah, well, Which, just for... Just I understand 10 miles is 10 miles, but sure. that's, one, 10 miles, that's one of the issues. 10 miles from Brandon, yeah. it's 20 that's miles sure. from... Is that's one of the Boston? details. Ten Not miles. ten miles. <laughs> that's one of those detailed discussions that are going to come out. Right. Yeah. Uh, the people will have. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't look at it. Uh, sure, I agree, but I, uh, that's that's where you're going to get most of the pushback. Well, there'll be there'll be all kinds of pushback, and you can look at models the, of of area towns that have done similar things. Uh, Middlebury made a decision to move their middle school off campus, uh, and they went through all a lot of those discussions. To figure that out, um, and it, I think I, I worked at that school for ten years, and I think it, it was a very viable option, and still is, uh, to have a middle school, and they've gone now six through eight, um, to have a middle school off campus, and uh, it it seems to be workable. Um, so you know there are things to look at. Uh, there were some significant challenges with the feasibility study of looking at a middle school on the OV campus. So I just looked at that property in Pittsford and said, maybe that one is an option. And we should look at it and see what the feasibility is, what are the pros and cons there. Uh, so I'd like to make a motion that, um, that we investigate uh, a or invest in a viability study on that property. Anyone want a second? Oh yeah, second. and uh, you have to put some money, attach some money to it. Um, I'm not sure what's reasonable in terms of a limitation of funding, Brenda. I would say twenty thousand. Not to exceed twenty thousand, up to twenty thousand. Second. I have a second. Look at that. Okay, so the question, so does anybody have any other questions? I do. Okay, go for it. Um, Derek, would that proposal be basically to re -look, you know, change directions and relook at another site for the same um, specification of work that was given to the Otter Valley site? I believe that the work of the task force, uh, much of it is still valid. I mean, you're not looking to revise that proposal in any way. You're just looking to relocate it. Maybe with the exception that we recommended you go <coughs> six to eight, not five to eight. And would we have to do another feasibility study for the location at, um, at Outer Valley. Valley Campus? Or is I think the, so. Okay. I guess that, so was my, have, that was my only question. Yeah, just so we have some comparables. Um, a comparison in terms of feasibility of, of the OV campus versus an alternate site. So this does this come out of left field for me a little bit. Uh, could you explain the logic of why you chose that site? I guess it's just because sure. the school board owns I, it? Or? I, I took a walk uh, behind the Caverly building and discovered that there was a lot of property there and I didn't know how much we owned so I inquired and the answer was 44 acres and here's the map and I said well this could be a possible middle school site that's all I mean okay. I don't have any hidden agendas or oh no I'm not I'm <laughs> trying to imply that I just wondering as as opposed to other spots no it's just that we own that property okay and um, why not utilize it if it's feasible do you, up, yeah. do you have a map up there I there was, we just took it down, we can put it back up. There was a map. <laughs> so I'm gonna let Bill ask his question. Well, I'm gonna let Angela go and then when the map goes back up, we can ask her a question. How's that? Okay. Go ahead, Angel. Um just just to I think I I I I second your um worry about being so far south of our district. But the other thing to, on the positive side is the power is already there, correct? It's not like Otter Valley where you got to go all the way to the back fields and bring power all the way down there. That's what the study is. already there with power. Well, it depends right? on the siting. 
I don't know. Depends on where That's it is. That's a feasibility question. That's what we want to find is out. Is there water and sewer there? A town water and sewer? I'm just curious. Town water and sewer? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, so I think I think money wise, it's twenty twenty thousand is is ouch. But I think um, I think it would be our due diligence to if we do own, you know, knowing that we own that piece of property, and it could potentially be cheaper in the long run to. Um, to build on that site, that's what I, this is just my internal thinking. Um, I think it would be worth at least doing the feasibility to study to say, give us comparables to say, all right, Otter Valley site would cost us X amount of money. Yeah. If we did it, you know, 10 miles south, which is not, you know, the greatest for, for location, but it'll save us X amount of money, I think that would be a positive. It also keeps the, the kids separate, which is one and keeps that the kids separate. Worried about. So there is some marketing things that we could do with that, if it truly panned out to be that way. But if the feasibility study came back and it was the same or more, then yeah, we, we know, know we would know where where we well, stood. Like you said, it's due diligence. You know, if we would be remiss not to at least look into it. So okay. is the proposal to do this as a concurrent effort? with the focus on OCA and Sudbury? Yes. Not a sequence. Yeah, it's a one, separate. You want to go off and do this in preparation for some future discussion? It's Long term, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. I think Brenda had something to add. Or, I'm sorry. So, so I just want to let you know a couple of things. The $20,000 is a guess, mm -hmm. and you know me. If I don't need to spend that, we're not going to. <laughs> the other thing that I think it does is it gives you some good information on that land that you may not use today, tomorrow, or five years from now, but becomes more knowledge that we have on what the capabilities or the opportunities are for the place. You say things so much better than I do. How about them, Bill? I did. Okay, so oh. Bill, no, I'm right. Bill, did you, what was your question? I think he just wanted to see the map. Oh, you just wanted to see the map? Okay, I'm sorry. I thought you had a question. <clears throat> no. Okay. So what is that road right there? That's that's the, not seven. Uh, Plains Road that's is Plains the road. large road. So it's the, the one that goes yeah. Yeah. where the town yeah. office is. By the dollar store, our yeah. new yeah. dollar store. Is this house? Where you would go so Angela? Ready, ready for a vote. The haunted house. Yeah. Haunted house. Haunted house. And, um, right. <laughs> we used to own the haunted house. We sold the haunted house. Yeah, I didn't know that. came to rest. Sorry. Natalie has a question. Natalie. Oh, no. So I have a comment, really. I okay. feel like we are getting ahead of ourselves. And I would hate to do a feasibility analysis in a, in a single bubble. I feel like we need to do an alternatives analysis, which includes all of the different areas that we're considering and that lists the pros and cons of each so that we can do it all at once. Um, I feel like when we get this information piecemeal, it's um, not very helpful. So the task force, I will tell you, Natalie, that the task force did that with many, many sites, but we never looked at Cavalry. Okay. So we kind of actually already did that. So we would be adding this to the, to the project that was already done. Right. So can it be an amendment to the project, you know, additional information added to what's already been done? Sure. Yeah. Was there a reason the task force didn't look at this property? I think we didn't realize that we owned 44 <laughs> acres. We owned a haunted house at one point, which we transferred for the 44 acres. I'm actually trying to think of why we didn't so, look at it. We, we it didn't know up. that we owned a haunted house until Act 46, so, yeah. you know. I knew that. We didn't even know. Right, right, and, you, you knew know, that, too? Yeah. Yeah. To bring the history, we we sold the haunted house, but was given the forty four because of the, no, we, we sold, sold. We gave them the haunted house so we could have a school. Right. The school. Oh wasn't yeah, yeah, yeah. We right. traded the school, which but gave us the forty four acres also. We already had that. We already oh, we already had, had that. that. Well, then we just didn't know we had it. That. Nobody thought about it. <laughs> we would need twenty months for that. Yeah. <laughs> Derek missed that meeting. So. I know. Yeah. So yeah, I missed that meeting. <laughs> so any other questions? So we do have an, a motion on the floor. Derek is asking that we appropriate up to $20,000 for a feasibility study of the Cavalry land.
for a potential middle school building. So, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Put your hands up because you all did that weird one too. <laughs> oh, it's unanimous. Everybody. Well, holy heck. Okay. Thank you for that. I thought it was going to be contentious. All right. So there we go. So feasibility study underway. So do. Since well, have we, we finished the discussion? I was going to say, since we've got 10 minutes left, can, well, I, can I make a motion? Um, or do we need a motion? Or? For what? For the, for the modular and for oh, Marsha. Yeah, like yeah, so yeah, so let's talk about the modular next. Okay, go for it. I would like to make a motion. Yes, ma'am. I don't know how to say it, but I'm, I'm going to make a motion right. um, that we add the whatever the size of the modular. Uh, 52 by 24. 52 by 24 modular at um lester site and we um provide marcia the opportunity to i think you should make separate. those two separate motions okay i'll do it separate <laughs> i'm not sure you need to make a motion because you already did right we yeah. already have the motion for the just say brenda no, go for we authorize yeah. brenda to go for it reauthorize right because we already made the authorization for the okay can we just have a hands to say brenda go for us yeah. just sure. to make sure so everybody's on the those that still want brenda to go for it on the modular raise your hand wait a minute i i want to get back uh, derek kind of interrupted the discussion of the water system and i, I just want to point out it's it's a bad logical fallacy to say well we've been things have been great for 20 years so therefore we can assume there's another 20 years of things going. Um, I'll tell you a little brief story. I used to teach a class in the history of Burlington. We brought the, the water guy in one day to talk about the water system in Burlington, which goes back to 1869. And he said, everything's held together with string and, and paper clips. And there are only two of us in, in the city that know how everything works. And if we got run over by a truck while we were over manhole cover, the city of Burlington would fall apart. And every year I go to the city council in Burlington and say, we need millions and millions of dollars for our water system. And every year they say, oh, my toilet flushes, you know, we can put it off for a while. That's what we're doing here. Um, we, if we're talk, gonna talk about facility studies and, and learning what we've got, we should concentrate on uh, understanding the building we've got 80 of our children in and try to get some kind of grasp on what the future of that building is. We haven't done that. I haven't heard that from anybody tonight. We, um, we have before, before yeah. you were on the board. Okay, um, well, uh, that's information I need that I haven't gotten. Because, um, you know, it, it's like we're, we're dancing on a cliff edge and saying, well, you know, there's never gonna be an earthquake. There's never gonna be a rainstorm that makes the cliff, you know. That's, that's, uh, that's really bad thinking. Yep, and it's, it should be unacceptable to us to say, well, you know, things have been okay so far, so we'll just kind of go along with what we've got. Okay, Bill. Um, I follow your logic and I agree with it, but at the same time I'm asking what kind of plan is on the table that would solve the problem in a more permanent fashion. He said he, so can you say that again for I sure? So he said that he agreed. Um, I agree with Kevin's logic, but uh, at the same time, I'm we'll saying we yeah, have, have another We do have a space issue that needs to be handled, and we cannot fix that space issue quickly or harmoniously. We have um, five months to come up with a solution. And, and that's why I kind of agree with let's put the band aid on what we can, but let's. Keep, keep our it, foot keep on, our the pedal pedal on the pedal and keep moving forward and not lose sight. So I, I move to amend the motion then that we include a, a study for a long-term plan about this, what the solution will be in Leicester. Otherwise, we put the Band-Aid on it, we've walked away from it. Well, you'd have to get someone, you'd have to talk to the person who made the motion. Uh, actually, the motion would happen uh, way it's, it's, long time ago. Yeah. It's, it's so going to happen can. either way. If yeah, we're on that though. Uh, wait. Oh, go ahead, Angela, I'm sorry. Okay. No, I'm, I was just saying talking. it's gonna. Ha it's, uh, I I was gonna say what he did in in that it, we, you know we have an immediate need this year that has to be solved before next year, so uh, unless there's another solution that can be presented tonight that we can think about and discuss and and go in that direction, it, uh, we have to make a decision tonight to to fix this band aid. Um, but I I I think we all as a board 
minus me because I won't be here. But um, I think you guys all are gonna gonna keep moving forward on on trying to s solve the the future needs of Lester and answer um, the question of what happens if the water fails, what happens if the sewer fails, mm -hmm. what is our our solution to to Lester? Do we it, there's many different things, the paths to go down to, to discuss, but it's not something that we have time to tonight, so. Well, as long as it's clear that this is a Band-Aid and we're not calling it surgery. Yeah. <coughs> I, hear, I, I hear your caution that we should not <coughs> roll good well, money order. after bad. You know, if I have a, a amendment to the motion on the floor that does not yet have a second. That's true. Second. It, because we told, we were said that we don't need a motion. Don't need a, don't need a motion. It's already been made. We just need to say yay or nay. The decision okay. to do the yeah, modulation. Wait, wait a minute. Stop. If I hear Kevin's amendment to the motion, it is conjunctive. It is to do go ahead with the mobile and while doing a long range plan because we realize that this is temporary. That's correct. So the there isn't the any the real harm in continuing to look at things, and in fact, we should. So there's no motion; he's amending. Angels. No, the mo was it, no. Uh, Angel, I, no. Angels wasn't. Angels wasn't a motion because the motion happened um, like months, weeks so ago, ago, months ago, a long, long time ago, where we've already given authority for her, for Brenda to look into it. Right. Which, so that's oh. already happened. So. So, and the issue is, is that in order to make an amendment like that, you'd have to talk to the person who made the, the motion originally. Which and we I no longer know remember. That is. Okay. Okay. Then. So that, but I agree with you, Kevin, that we need to keep our foot on the gas and make sure that we don't just let this. So what are we stop. about to vote on if there's no motion? Oh, we're not, we're not really, really voting. We're, we're just, not really voting. We're, we're just, just telling Brenda that yes, we want to move or no, we don't. So but do there is a second a motion you were going to make. Yes, there is a second second. motion. I haven't made it But not regarding <laughs> There was a second motion. I, I've lost. Well, it hasn't been we don't made yet. need to vote on the original motion because we waved our hand at Brenda, which is an unusual parliamentary procedure, but okay. Uh, so so the, essentially what we're saying is that we're going to go ahead with our original motion and just... You're not rescinding and it. We're not, we're not rescinding it. it. I just wanted to get a head nod to make sure everybody was on the same page. Right. That was passed in August. The, this whole discussion was, should we rescind the modular? And it went off on a, on a tangent. So we are saying right now that no, we're not going to rescind the original gonna... motion. Can't be disposed of so easily. I think that the original motion passed four voting. months ago, though, Bill. Yeah. Right. So we're not re right. We're not rescinding that. So we're not rescinding that motion, or we're not we're not going back to that motion of however many months ago. I think is what we're trying to say. So we were just, I was just trying to get an idea of who agreed with the fact that we should continue moving forward with the modular. Another way to ask that is there a motion to rescind yeah. that okay. decision? That was not clear. Okay, and I apologize. So is there a motion to rescind or are we moving forward? Guess we're moving forward. Move. If we don't, didn't have a motion, we can't return right. it. Forward's a good place to be. Well, no, okay. So we're moving forward with the modular unit for now. Okay? Yep. All right, so you want to make a second motion, or well, you want to make My a first motion. motion. There you go, your first motion. <laughs> a motion is, um, and you'll have to wordsmith this for me, Jean or <laughs> Marcia, because um, I don't know what all the terms are, but I, I would like to make a motion that, um, Marsha be able to to, to approve Marsha's concept of setting up uh, uh, it help me Marsha it's not an alternative program uh, the evalu team, evalu team, evaluation team offices along with an interim alternative placement for traumatized children so yeah so you know, a special Shirley. education program <laughs> for Marsha to use the Sudbury building for appropriate special education services on a permanent basis second Okay, good. Um, we're not going to say on a permanent basis. Well, I didn't. Because there, because permanent basis would mean forever and ever. Permanent and doesn't have to be the word, but can I have a discussion? Um, yeah, well, we can now do we discussion. discuss. Yes, there's discussion. Who seconded the motion? Uh, Becky. Becky. Natalie. Did. Or Natalie. Oh, no, it was Becky. It was no, Becky? it was. Oh, was it Natalie? <laughs> it was All right. Natalie's waving saying it was her. So. Okay, thank you for coming. Point of order. It's now 8 o'clock. Is there a phone number that, can you write down your phone number? Because I need to, I'm going to be calling you later. 
Sorry. Go ahead. Um, so it, there's a second so discussion. Point Thank of you. order. It's now 8 o'clock. The meeting's so, over. And we just had somebody leave. Uh, this really discussion really shouldn't take place at this time. We have a well, motion actually, on we the could floor. make a motion. There's a motion on the floor, and yeah. we could also Barbara, make a motion. Right, to extend the meeting. Right, to extend the okay. meeting. I move to extend the meeting. And we have to extend the meeting anyway because we need an executive decision. Second. I don't know how much, 20 minutes? 30 minutes. 30, 30 minutes. minutes. Okay, 30 minutes. Second. All those in favor of extending the meeting 30 minutes? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Okay. So we're extending the meeting 30 minutes. Still have a quorum. And you still have a quorum. Lori, the only discussion I wanted to have on that on that motion. Yeah. Maybe it doesn't have to be included in the wording, maybe it should be. But my sense from the from the um, modular unit at at Lester reaction that the board had at the October meeting to really understanding the implications and details of it is that they really didn't understand the implications and details of it when they voted in favor of it. And that we shouldn't have that. And that this is a very critical decision we're going to make on behalf of a very critical program. And we shouldn't be a year from now saying, well, we didn't realize that we were committing for a multi-year commitment. The board should realize and accept and acknowledge that that is what we intend to do in fairness to Marsha and the program. The motion doesn't include that, but it's important to me that we somehow recognize and acknowledge that that's what we're committing to. Well, I, I know personally, I would not vote for it if I knew it was only a one or two year program. I mean, we have to think that's about just, our students and about the longevity of the program and if it's good for kids, it should stay there as long as it possible. I gotcha. Yeah. And I and I feel that. But a year from now in another meeting and someone says, Hey, why don't we move into Sudbury? And then we say, Well, we can't do that because we committed to Marsha, but the motion never committed any timeline to Marsha. That's my point. And it doesn't have to if you don't feel it doesn't have to, but the board has to recognize that that's a commitment we're making. That's our intent. Well, and I would hope that any board that was here, it was, most of us were here, that we would, we would fight for it. Okay. But well, it's in the minutes that I'm making this statement. Right. If you don't want it to be in the motion, I'm fine with that, too. It's really up to you guys. I, I would, just don't know how you put a time commitment I, on it. I, I, don't know, I don't know how, yeah, I don't know how that I could put something in there that I would feel comfortable with. So um, I would like to leave my motion as is. I think it's for a program, and, and once you move a program in somewhere, we're not just going to say, oh, you're out, because we, we want to do it something else. But that's my opinion. Okay. I accept. So, okay. You're pairing it with offices um, for a whole evaluation team, Barry, <coughs> but you're also pairing it with offices. So it's, mm -hmm. it's not just a place where students will be. So they would be misplaced. So it's, that's why I said... If we go there, it's important because those are your school psychologists, your SLP. You know, it's it's quite a few people that would be moving. Yep. And I'm for that. So. So I'm going to pause a second as you're coming to an end. I'd like to tell Debbie and Tom, and Kristen, and Christine. I don't really think you guys need to stick around. You're welcome to, but it is eight o'clock for you guys, and I think this part of the board meeting is not focused on your schools. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. And Allison, you can do whatever you'd like. <laughs> so, um, any, so other discussion regarding the motion on the floor? Uh, sure. Um, one of my concerns tonight, and the reason I, I just feel like this is rushed and hurried, is because we've had this discussion about buildings and how buildings operate and what we should do with the buildings. And then suddenly, all of a sudden, with one minute left in the meeting, We've got this motion to, to, uh, to begin this program, and we haven't had, uh, I don't think we've finished the programmatic discussion about whether this is a good idea. That kind of seems to be implicit in the board's attitude right now. Like, okay, well, you know, this is all settled. Well, we did we have that discussion. We have, and you missed both of those meetings, <laughs> well, unfortunately. unfortunately, and then I'm going to have to talk about it some, some right now. Um, 
uh, I've just got a grave concern about the idea of separating children from their school at that age. I don't think the North Campus program for traumatized kids works very well. I think they feel stigmatized from that. Point of order. And you're out of line. Point, yeah, point order. This, we're not talking about. That's not what we're talking kids. about. And okay, well, I, I don't think that, that putting putting young children, separating them away from their, their peers is. Point of order. Person. Okay, let him have. Let him He's him. got the floor. <laughs> And I would like to have the motion clarified at some point, but he's speaking. Okay. Thank you. So the idea of moving young children away, I mean, I, I really understand the problems of, of, a, of a teacher in a traumatized, uh, with a traumatized, severely traumatized kid in a classroom. Uh, you know, my family took our son out of the public schools for three years because of a situation like that. At the same time, I'm con extremely concerned about uh, kids internalizing the idea of stigmati being stigmatized because they've been separated from their peers and sent to a different school for you know 45 days, renewable perhaps, um, that it will make children feel like they've been separated out, that they've been pegged as losers, that they don't have the same futures as their peers. So that's the idea of separation that uh, is extremely concerning to me, and I'm also concerned about the idea of what happens when these kids return. Um, has the classroom been prepared for their return? Do, 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 uh, have we um, gotten the kids to th and the teachers prepared for the return of somebody who may have made progress but still is um, potentially going to have problems. All of that, I just think we've inadequately discussed, and, and, and it's, it's almost offensive to me that, that we've just kind of tacked it onto this facilities discussion with a minute left to go. I, I think that's a disservice to um, uh, the families that are going to be involved and, and to our, our, our duty of, 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 of thinking these things through. So that's the secondary issue. The primary one is um, this, this worry about uh, what the effect on very young children is going to be to be separated from their school and separated from their, um, their classrooms for potentially a lengthy period. Thanks. So I would like Marcia to answer yeah. his question. Please. Sure. So, because so this is not what this is. Things. You've got two options here. Well, just, it's Sudbury. Sorry. There will not be children there in a school program. There will be a team that will be highly skilled with trauma that will wrap around a child who's struggling. They will initially go into the school. If the child has to go to Sudbury for up to 45 days to program them, to get to know them, to do a functional behavioral assessment, to create proper programming, to wrap around with other service providers, clinicians, social workers, that will happen. It could be a week, it could be two days, it could be up to 45 days. Principals now have that right. They're able to move students out to assess them. We do that. We don't do it in Sudbury, but we do it at other places. This is not for children to go to a program. That team then is deployed to get that child back to their school as soon as possible, train those staff, and be in that building. It's a response unit for a specific kind of student. And if that student has to leave for a while, and that student will leave for a while, that team will train that group in the building to get them back. This is not a program. This is not an exclusionary. That's not how I presented it. I presented it as a responsive team. So just so that you know, so I just want to clarify that for, for the board, because I've heard the word program used. So there won't be a large group of children in Sudbury. Jean. Um, I'd like to respectfully say to the board that how Marsha runs her special education program is not a matter of discussion for the board. That's what we hire Marsha to do. The request to the board is whether or not she can use Sudbury School. She can build, um, she can put her evaluation team wherever she wishes within the district, within the spaces that are already hers. So the question before the board is whether she can use Sudbury School. Agreed. Thank you for that. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. So the motion on the floor is that um, 
to Sud use Sudbury School for Special Education Services. There we go. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Hands. One, two, three, four, four five. five. All those against? One. And all oh, abstaining? And two abstaining. Okay, motion passes. Okay. So the last order of business is an executive session that we need. Um, um, do we want for a personnel matter? For a personnel <laughs> matter, yes. Uh, we could move into the room next door while they break things down. Okay. 